Hi, my name is Joel Harris, Designated Support Specialist from the Autodesk Enterprise Priority Support Team. And today I'm going to walk you through some of the AutoCAD Plant 3D modeling tools designed to make routing pipe in Plant 3D easier and more manageable. I will be covering the compass, elevation and routing, and slope panels on the Home tab of the Plant 3D ribbon as shown here. First we will learn about the compass tool. The Plant 3D Compass tool is essential to routing pipe since it helps you to specify precise angles. You can turn the compass on or off, change the compass size, and set angle snap settings. The compass orients to match the current routing direction and plane. Here I am holding the control key down while selecting the right mouse button to toggle the routing plane. When you specify angles in the compass, I'm using the tab key to switch between the angle and the distance, they are relative to the current routing direction. On the compass, you can set the tick mark increment by toggling this right here, turn it on, and setting the angle. And we'll have ticks at every 15 degrees now. You can also set an angular snap increment with this toggle right here. And that increment is by default set to 5 degrees, but you can set it to whatever you like. And it will constrain your, your placement of pipe. Now the angular constraint that you're seeing here is due to this, the fittings that are available in the current spec. There's also a snap angular tolerance setting. When you connect to another pipe segment or fitting, the angle of connection will be constrained to no more than the stated tolerance angle. Go ahead and route a piece of pipe right here to 91 degrees. And then we go to the tolerance setting here and toggle that on. Settings set to 2 right now. You have various settings that you can go 0 through 3. We can, we can reset it back to 0 if you want to. We're going to set it to 3. And now when we go ahead and continue on from that pipe, you'll see that there is a extra tick marks there. It shows a tolerance. So it allows me to go up to three degrees off of the straight connection angle there. So if I make that connection right there, I'm going to put this in wireframe, you'll see that the weld is there and it's connected based on this tolerance right here. That tolerance is the angular tolerance. There's also a setting for an offset distance tolerance, and that's specified in the project default connectors config file for each joint type. Under the elevation and routing panel, we have the ability to set a routing elevation without actually changing the AutoCAD UCS or using the LF command, neither of which is recommended with Plan 3D. The default routing line offset is able to be controlled here in case you uh, want to route, say, for example, from bottom of pipe instead of at the center of pipe. There are several options available. So I'll demonstrate. If we route a piece of pipe at center pipe at zero elevation, you can see it here in the model. We set the elevation to 10 feet, for example, using imperial units. And we set the uh, routing to be bottom of pipe. When I route that pipe, you can see from the side view, it's at a different elevation. If we uh, look at the center pipe elevation, it's at 10 foot 1 and 3 quarters because the three and a half inch diameter pipe is going to have enough center line at 10 foot uh, for the bottom of pipe. Next on this panel, we'll take a look at the toggle elevation snap command. You can see that uh, it's a toggle. It controls whether pipe elevation snapping is enabled. 
and whatever value is in this box is what it will snap to. Right now we're routing at an elevation of zero, but if we wanted to go up to a center line elevation of 10 foot, we could do that um, by turning on this elevation snap. So let's go ahead and route a piece of pipe. And once again, this is at elevation zero, center pipe. And when I hit the control key and use my right mouse button to go into the vertical, I can specify where I want to go to. Um, if I type in a value up here of 10 foot, and then turn on the toggle snap, it snaps right to that elevation. So if we were to ID that piece of pipe, you'd see that the center pipe is at 10 foot. You need to turn this off before you can change the value to whatever other value you might be wanting to snap to while you're routing pipe. Let's look at the slope panel. Here you can set the rise and run values and this will toggle whether the uh, horizontal piping being that's being routed will have a uh, slope or not. For the rise box, a negative value will have the pipe rising as you route it, and a positive value will result in the pipe sloping down as you route it. And the toggle button for the current pipe that's being routed, whether it'll be sloped or not, is right here. So we toggle it on. Let's go ahead and set a one inch per one foot rise. So we'll put in one foot there. And negative one inch actually will give us the sloping up and when we click on that you can see the angle is calculated and we can route the pipe and see that it is indeed sloping up as we route it. If we turn off the toggle the pipe is flat and if we change it to a negative value or a positive value rather then it will be sloping down. You can edit the pipe slope after it's been routed by right-clicking after selecting the pipe and pick Pipe Slope Editing. This dialog will allow you to change the end elevation, start elevation, uh, the rise that's happening right now, which is roughly 1 per 1 16th of an inch per inch or 1 inch per foot, and you can specify the slope. So if I want to change that to a uh, be sloping up, hit OK and we'll have the same slope going in the opposite direction. Here we have a small plant model, and I'm going to demonstrate some simple pipe editing tools. When you select a piece of pipe, you get special grips that come up, which allow you to substitute the part, move the part, or change the part pipe elevation. All of this pipe is sitting right on this steel bent here. If we want to raise a particular piece of pipe, we can see that all the bottom of pipes are common. We can take this with this one, and let's say we want to put it on a four inch shoe. I click on the change pipe elevation, and then I can tab between the different values, whether I want to specify a bottom of pipe or center pipe or top of pipe. Uh, let's go ahead and change the bottom of pipe from 16 feet to 16 foot four or four inch shoe. And that raises that pipe up so that it is now four inches above the steel and we can add shoes to the pipe. And now we're going to route some pipe from this valve coming off the uh, discharge of a pump. There's a flange there that's already been placed and we're going to route it up to this T. We'd like it to rest on this steel support here that is at an elevation of 13 feet. The first thing we do is we can pick this, but I'm going to show you how to turn off some objects that may be in the way. So we'll select an object on this line number. We can see the line number. I can right click and add to the selection uh, the entire line number. And then I can go ahead and use the, um, the part hiding to hide the selected parts. This is much like turning off the layer, but it's not going to be changing the actual layer state. And you can always unhide the, uh, the hidden parts. So let's go ahead and use the plus grip to continue pipe routing from that flange. And we can just go up and connect to the node with our O-snaps set. And it will automatically try to find routes. We can select next to go through the different options. We're going to accept this one. Now that pipe is being routed from this flange to that T up there and it's 
going to adopt the line number of the piping that it's connected to. So if I hover over it, I can see that it's got the size and the, the, the line number tag is all assigned to it. If I was to go to try to change the pipe elevation here by using that grip, I can tab to the bottom of pipe and try to set it to 13 feet, but it won't do any do what I want. It actually moves the entire piping header down as well, and I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. What I need to do is either erase this elbow, which is the fastest way, or erase the weld that's there on that elbow, which I can do by changing my display mode to 2D wireframe, and erase that weld dot there, and then it will no longer try to stay connected to that header. So now I can go ahead and change this pipe elevation to 13 feet, and then I can go ahead and route from this elbow back up to that T. And we'll end the hiding of isolation of parts. And then anything that was turned off before is now turned back on. This line that was hidden is now back on. And we've routed our pipe, and it's resting on this steel right here. Now let's say that I want to place a T in this line right here. I can do that a couple of different ways. One is by uh, selecting a T from the actual palette over here. And we can pick a reducing T because I want to have a four inch branch coming off of this six inch line. So I can place my reducing T in there and I can specify where I want it to be. There are two values that are there that I can tab between. One is the distance from that elbow. So you can see it's seven foot 11 and five eighths from the elbow that's rising up into the pipe rack. Or if I hit tab, I can change it to be a certain distance from the other end where it's turning horizontally. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it uh, 14 feet from that end. And it places the T. Now I can change the orientation if I want it to drop straight down. This is where your compass comes in handy because you don't have to uh, guess at it. You can have your snap set to, you know, with your tick marks showing you what, what, you're, what you're selecting there. And you set your toggle your snaps on, and it will only let you go in certain directions. So I'm going to go ahead and go down with a 90 degree direction straight down. And then we can look at that, and that is a 6 by 3. That's not what I wanted, but I can select that. T and substitute the part out for a 6 by 4 T or even the straight 6 inch T or other sizes. So I'm going to go with the 6 by 4 and now I have that T in place and I could go ahead and route from the T. Another way to place that T connection is to take and set our size that we want which is 4 inch. We have our line number set. We'll select route pipe. It'll instantly connect to that, if as I hover over it, it'll pick up the nearest point. And I can change my compass direction, compass plane, by selecting Control right click. Once I'm in the right plane, I can use the tab key to go between the different values. So I could type in six foot, if I want it to be six foot from that elbow where it rises into the, uh, the pipe rack. And I can even hit tab and change the other distance. I can change the length of the pipe that I'm routing, that's the four inch coming down, as well as the angle. Once I've got everything I've, the way I want it to, I go ahead and pick that point. And the T is placed exactly where I want it in this pipe that's horizontal. Thank you for joining me for this session of Plant 3D with the Experts.